Hi there everyone, in this video I will show you the code that I wrote in the last video where I showed you some really cool n-body simulations of planets like this. The code does allow for 3D movement if you want to use it, but I will be restricting it to just 2D movement to make it simple. But you don't have to alter anything about the code to do it in 3D. So before we start, I am using a program called Spider to write and run my Python code. And if you're relatively new to Python, I really, really recommend it. I am assuming that you have at least some basic Python knowledge as it will be a lot easier to follow along. But the code is relatively easy to use if you want it. So let's get started. We will start by importing some libraries. NumPy is useful for anything math related. And we will be doing that of course, so it is essential. And then we need to import the matplot libraries, PLT, which stands for plot, and the animation library, as we want to create some cool GIFs. It is a GIF and not a GIF change my mind. The next step is defining some constants that we will be using, like the gravitational constant. Additionally, we will be defining one astronomical unit, which is the distance between the Earth and Sun. This way we can more easily plug in distances and such. Whenever I want to set a font size, I want it to be the same everywhere just for convenience, so I will set it to 14. It is just a variable right now, but I will use it later. The next step is defining the initial conditions of the celestial bodies that you want to simulate. In this example, I will do the Sun and Earth. The Sun will stand still in the middle, and so that is very easy. And next up, Earth. I will put at about an X coordinate of 1 AU. And off the top of my head, it has a velocity of about 30 kilometers per second. Now, either put this in the positive or negative Y direction, depending on if you want it to move clockwise or anti-clockwise, as seen from the given position. So this bit is the most important if you want your custom system. We need to combine this with a list of celestial objects that go with these initial conditions. In this list we will put the name, mass and the previously mentioned initial conditions like position and velocity. Next we need to extract the information from the list into usable arrays for each body that we have. We follow up with defining the time steps the simulation takes and how long it should run for inside the simulation itself. The smaller the time step the more accurate your simulation is but this means it is more computationally expensive, which takes more time, so be careful with this. Small t is the starting time, and this time values is for which points in time a calculation for position and velocity should be done. We then create arrays we want to store our newly calculated positions and velocities in. That way we can grab these arrays later and plot them when all positions have been calculated and added to these arrays. In the meantime, we are defining the center of mass to ensure that it is always in the middle of our simulation. We will be using this later. And now we get to the relatively complicated stuff. Defining gravity and defining the equations that solve the equations of motion for the planets. We want to define an equation that puts out the acceleration experienced by every single body. This acceleration somebody A experiences is the sum of all forces interacting on A divided by the mass of A. So for each body in our simulation, this part here, it needs to calculate the acceleration for each other body and not itself. So we are basically implementing these equations. Now, just knowing acceleration is not enough. We want to know what positions follow from that. This is where you need to know about solving differential equations. Well, we are making it a little bit easier. If we have an initial position x, then we can approximate the new position as the old one plus the slope at x for a certain amount of time dt. You can imagine that this is not 100% accurate as after some time dt has passed, the slope will have changed. Taking a smaller time dt will limit this error. Now, one can use different solving methods to improve the accuracy. The ones that I recommend looking up are Verlet, if I pronounce it right, Leapfrog or Runcutter, which is the one I used in the previous video. This method right here is called the Euler method and it is fine for now. It is also the easiest to implement. So we calculate the new positions and it returns them to be used. We then want to create the simulation loop which we want to run for the duration of the defined runtime. As long as the runtime has not passed, it will keep going and do the following. 
Calculate positions and velocities using the defined integration method above, then adjust it to a center of mass frame, and then store it into our arrays. It will then move to the next time step and do it again. Just to be safe, I put the calculated positions in this array. We are now creating the animations from these positions. We define the shape of our plot like this for now. We create empty lists of what will be the animated trail and position of our objects. Then for each later defined frame, we want to plot the trail and position for a body. Here you can also put the boundaries of our plot window and set the titles for axes and such. We also set some initial conditions for this. And now we do this for each body like this. Lastly, we put in a legend for convenience. And we put in a line actually calling for the animation to be made. So I had to do some troubleshooting and I found that I forgot to give this frame setting a range of numbers, so I fixed that. I also defined the usable positions as past positions and maybe some other small changes have been made while troubleshooting but I have not written them down. But you can check it out for yourself and I also put a download link in the description, so check that out. So I know some of you that are watching might not be too familiar with some of the things I showed here in Python, or maybe the math presented was not really intuitive to you yet. As someone who is into math and science, and as someone who wants to learn more efficiently, I really recommend taking a look at Brilliant to enhance your skills, and they are so kind to sponsor this video. Brilliant is a place where you learn by doing. It has thousands of interactive lessons surrounding the subjects of math, science, programming and AI, all of which are topics that one can never know enough about. And we all can get bored or distracted when sitting in class, but Brilliant makes learning both fun and more engaging, making it more effective than watching regular lecture videos on a given topic. Brilliant is about problem solving and not about memorizing. Improving on your problem solving skills is always good as it is an asset in great demand. So to help you along your learning journey, Brilliant has bite-sized lessons that you can do in any place at any time. This way you can keep up your daily learning habit. Now, if you're feeling like learning more math that you can apply yourself, then I recommend you take a look at the math course they offer right now. There are many other courses as well that get into specific aspects of math, which I really love. So to try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash curious or you can click on the link in the description or in the pinned comment. You'll also get 20% off of an annual premium subscription. So now that we have finished the code, we can run it. And for our example case, if we choose a DT of 0.1 days for 1000 days, we get this. And as you can see, there's a weird little drift going on over here. And if you want more accurate results, you can try different integration methods in the solver part over here. So feel free to poke around and have fun, and I will see you around next time.